think it was a very complete talk and so many innovations and the best part is that from the indian subcontinent it was really a very uh, innovative talk with with innovations in smile uh, we have two more talks on smile and then we can discuss uh, the smile uh, procedure and the uh, and the subject uh, i would now invite dr vardhman kankaria to give his talk on epithelial growth management after lasik and smile thank you ma'am uh, yeah uh, dr namrata ma'am is my slide yeah. visible uh, dr vardhman i think we all know him very well he is director of asian eye hospital from pune and a very uh, bright and a young uh, cataract and refractive surgeon thank you ma'am thank you for the kind words and uh, again a special thank you to dr namrata ma'am for uh, curating this amazing session uh, she has been a great inspiration for all of us and uh, amazing leader to have in aios uh, i'm going to just give you a slight brief overview about some basics of uh, post lasik and smile epithelial growth and probably try to uh, discuss couple of very unique cases and unique approaches in treating our uh, friends as we all know uh, both post lasik as well as post smile epithelial engrowths are uh, uncommon complications they are characterized by uh, epithelial engrowths of stratified epithelium between either the flap and the stromal bed which happens in lasik or between the cap and the stromal bed which can happen in smile this can lead to range of symptoms and signs depending on the stage at which we are encountering them fortunately they are uncommon however they can they are known to progress in some scenario and uh, this is a wonderful classification given by probes and mashet and they have given uh, four different uh, stages of epithelial growth especially post lasik uh, the first one being it's a non progressive very very uh, peripheral epithelial cells uh, which require only observations uh, there is no intervention required and they typically are known to disappear within few months some of them progress to the stage 2 in which uh, we can see that there are epithelial uh, sheet of cells which you can very clearly demarcate uh, they are known to be progressive so it is important that if they are actually more than 2 mm within the flap edge and progressive you have to lift the uh, lift the flap debride the epithelium from both the stromal interface from the under surface of the flap as well as on the surface of the stroma as well and avoid uh, any excessive epithelial trauma make sure that you align the epithelial flap back in place and you can also take help of certain adjuvants such as mitomycin c and absolute alcohol to kill rest of the cells that you may not be able to debride uh in spite of this maneuvers some epithelial cells uh in growths are known to be intractable they become recurrent in which after your first intervention of debridement they are known to recur again especially this is true for the epithelial in growths which have a epithelial fistula at the flap edge this you can find out very easily by doing what is called as a fluorescent staining uh in such cases along with a typical debridement use of mitomycin c use of uh Uh, absolute alcohol it is also important that we actually secure this flap edge very tightly with help of multiple 10 nylon sutures and sometimes even the fibrin glow has been published uh, along with that uh, to use to basically reduce the chance of epithelial fistula uh, there has been also reports of use of ptk to kill the rest of the epithelial cells to reduce chance of fibrosis and also smoothen the stromal bed as well however in some cases the epithelial in growth is absolutely extreme it is known to be causing stromal melt including the flap and causes extreme uh, extreme topographic uh, irregular astigmatism in such cases it is crucial that we actually go ahead and uh, ampute the flap so this is a case who was referred to us by a neighboring state as you can see this is a very very large scale epithelial in growth into the interface after lasik the primary surgeon had done uh, debridement three times uh, and once he had also put the sutures but they kept coming back so as you can see i have lifted the flap now and there is uh, definitely lot of uh, fibrosis that is difficult to just lift up there is a flap melt in the center and you can see the epithelial in growth is as high as 400 micron in its thickness i have debrided the i have removed the flap by flap amputation then we used mitomycin c absolute alcohol a bit of ptk and put the b seal in place and you can see on the right side 
this is two months after the uh, uh, flap amputation, the vision was improved from counting fingers to six by nine. Similar case, I had uh, I had opportunity uh, long back during my fellowship uh, that assisted. This was in 2009 with uh, Professor Kimionis. And you can see this was a similar case which we had uh, interacted and post flap amputation and the PTK, the vision again could be improved to six by nine. And we published this paper in European Journal of Ophthalmology. Uh, friends, definitely with the help of femtosecond laser, the epithelial growth chances have reduced very significantly because of much better fit of the flap age to the underlying stroma. And that has also reduced the chances of further flap slippage, micro stri as well as stri eye. It's not only after LASIK that you can have epithelial growth. Epithelial growth can also happen after SMILE because you still have a two millimeter uh, small incision and that is also a possible conduct to have epithelial growth. However, large uh, subset of these reported cases have shown non-progressive epithelial growth by both Sukhenta et al. as well as Iverson et al. And they have published data of thousands and thousands of SMILE procedures. However, there are only two cases yet reported with progressive epithelial growth post smile, one being from France and the other one being from India. Uh, in one of the cases which was published from India, uh, there was epithelial conduct. Therefore, they went through the uh, small incision. They tried to debride the epithelial growth. However, there was recurrence. And at that point, they put the sutures in place. Again, there was a recurrence. And at the end, they had to put a hydrogen ocular sealant. And at the end of this whole three times uh, inter inter uh, intervention, uh, the epithelial growth uh, stopped to re uh, recur again and the pace was uh, managed well. Uh, this was an interesting case uh, which we had encountered. This was a 35-year-old female patient who was referred to us. She underwent a very, uh, very, very straightforward smile procedure elsewhere for a spherical refractive error. In the left eye, the vision was 6'6". In the right eye, the vision had deteriorated to 6 by 36. You can see there is this small epithelial growth, unfortunately, in the visual axis. However, when we looked at the fluorescence staining, there was no epithelial fistula. And therefore, this was like an isolated central cell nest. This was confirmed again on OCT, as you can see there. And it and unfortunately caused a lot of topographic abnormality for the lady and caused vision to drop to less than 6 by 18. So in this case, of course, we had looked at the literature and there was a published report of going through the small incision again. But in this our case, there was no epithelial fistula. Uh, there has been report of YAG laser post LASIK, but this was again in the visual axis. So we didn't want to do that because it can cause scarring as well. Uh, so in this case, we had seen that epithelial uh, in growth was isolated, no epithelial fistula as such. We just wanted to have access to actually debride the epithelial in growth and use mitomycin C. And as Thomas Edison says, there is always a better way to do it, and we have to find it. Uh, as Dr. Mahipal Sarah just uh, described, the Circle software is a specialized software which has been FDA approved as enhancement tool which can convert your cap into a flap and give access to the interface. Uh, this is like a donut shape uh, femtosecond laser pattern which appears uh, with a side cut. I'll show you that in this video now. As you can see, this is the donut shape uh, femtosecond laser application with a side cut. This is the epithelial growth that you can see in the visual axis. Uh, I have entered from the newly cut side cuts, but I am entering in the same interface. Uh, that's uh, the beauty of the junctional cuts which happen with the circle software. I'm going across the epithelial growth and I am now going to lift the same interface so that we can have access to the uh, epithelial growth in totality. As you can see, this epithelial growth could be debrided very, very gently and easily. Uh, then we went to the undersurface of the newly formed flap. And from there as well, we removed the subset of these epithelial cells. We used mitomycin C and absolute alcohol to kill the rest of the epithelial cells and put the flap back in its place. So at the end, uh, we could actually get wonderful results and the vision improved to almost six by nine. Uh, this was a case that we published uh, very recently in Journal of Refractive Surgery. There were such two similar cases that we combined from LVPEI and uh, this is now published uh, in print at JRS. So again, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Namrata Ma'am for, uh, for the kind invitation and it's been a great learning session so far. Thank you so much, ma'am.